Hello everyone, Dr. Hawk here, and we have some interesting things to go over today. Um, I'd like to apologize in advance, I'm feeling a little crappy. Um, to those of you on tra chat roll, um, Drunk Hawk was drunk. But let's get that aside, and today I will be going over some of the recap from the latest uh, Wingman's Hangar. I'll have that playing picture in picture, and I'll just probably try to go over some of the highlights. Um, some of the first things he actually discussed um, was possible races, gladiator battles, engines, all this I'll be going over in detail. Uh, one thing I'd like to actually announce first, uh, some of you guys have talked to me before about a man named Lancaster. Um, you keep telling me to talk to him. Yeah. Just do it, motherfucker! Fine, jeez! So I did. So, through some discussions, we have some projects in mind. Um, not gonna announce it just yet because we don't know, you know, how the scheduling that will work for everyone. Uh, I might be talking to him here later in a little bit over a forum article. But yeah, so some upcoming projects um, with Lancaster. No actual merging, I'm still going to do Starsys and FM, but it would be interesting if the project we have in mind works out. That being said, let's get back to uh, Wingman's Hangar. So one of the first things that he started talking about was uh, possible races. And when I say this by races, I don't mean you know, Van Duel or aliens or snot people. I mean actual racing. You know, spoilers on your in your car. I almost said car. Still, you could have flying cars. Make it happen, guys. Um, customizable ships. The possibility of having ships fine-tuned for only racing. So think on uh, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, and the swoop racing or pod racing, whatever. That kind of thing. Will it happen in Star Citizen? Um, don't yet know. I'm a lot of speculation and ideas right now, but until we, you know, he said yeah or nay, I, until I see it on paper or, like, actually displayed in a video, it's up in the air right now. But that would be interesting because, uh, Hawk could make the Hawkmobile, and that would be fairly cool. Some of the other points were, uh, possible, what did I write down here, possible gladiator battles. Um, this was, I think, referring to actual, I think, PvP arenas, so actual, like, set up designated areas for those that want to duel it out. Um, one of the other things, Chris Roberts actually came in, and they were discussing uh, different kinds of engines and power plants for your ships, how these would uh, influ impact or influence your ship, I don't know. Some of them were discussed were fusion, uh, you know, hydrogen... I'd like to say nuclear, but I really don't see how a... Yeah, I don't know. Could be cool. Um, there was talk about a Mantis cameo, so I have to admit, I don't remember a lot of Wing, Ma uh, wing Commander. I was a very young when I played that, so some people might know what that is. I'm going to have to search that up and find out, and I will accept that Hawk made another stake. When will you learn? Probably remember once I see it and go, ah, that's what it is. I feel like a dumbass. Um, another interesting thing that was brought up during the video was interactivity in bars. So this could be anything from, you know, just signing in and having a chat role to actually seeing, as Chris said, full interactive players, and I think what he had mentioned saying is that they would find a way to render it so that if there were, like, you know, a thousand people running around in a bar, which would be very scary if, you know, a fight or something were to break out, um, the engine would try to scale it back so it wouldn't just become a lag fest. Um, this would be cool. I, if this worked out and they could find a way to render players um, in the bar so you could interact with each other and not just have the ships as the only interactive means, I think that would add a lot of depth and humanity to the game. You wouldn't just be seeing the um, hulls and ships and metal. You'd actually see, you know, as close as possible, real living or, you know, like I said, close as possible, human beings or aliens or raptors or whatever you play as. Um, could be cool. I'd like to see it done. Eve, I know, has tried attempting this uh, before. They have, you know, you can walk around your cabin 
etc. There's still no bars or I still haven't seen it pan out so hopefully Chris Roberts and uh, company can make that happen. Um, so yeah, on to other points. Some of the other uh, points of the video. Um, Chris Roberts would win in a game of table tennis against Eric. I take that as you uh, as you interpreted it, or vice versa. Uh, one of the other interesting points: nine new members at Cloud Imperium. Uh, as I said before, um, this is a good thing. In my previous episodes of CG, CIG, uh, CGI, CIG expanding, this shows you know right away they're still serious. They're getting ready. They're um, getting ready to work, and the fact they have new members means, you know, more work being done and more, um, more content for Star Citizen being produced. To those nine members, welcome. Pleasure to have you. Look forward to seeing some amazing stuff coming from you guys, and hopefully in the future, uh, we can either chat or I can, we can see some of the stuff that you guys create. Um, although I do remember one of the videos, I think one of the guys said they felt like the nine, the nine dwarves or something from The Hobbit. It was a good comparison by Eric. Um, we also got some subs previously locked subscriber content of the constellation being loaded, unloaded. I will have those videos playing for those that are interesting, interesting, interested in seeing that. Um, apparently it's a semi-truck to Eric's wonderful drawing skills, the constellation is a semi-truck in space. So, yes, there's a video that should be playing now for those that are interested. There's also an interview with Dave Haddock, the uh, writer. He does a lot of the lore. Um, I'll be putting links up for those who are interested. Check out his stuff. He's a really good writer. And, um, yeah, if you have time, watch the whole interview because... I, I like a game because of lore and the fact that you know you have men and women you know Dave working on the lore just uh, gives more meat for us fans to you know, question and talk about and discuss. Um, it's pretty much all I want to do is just recap some of Wingman's hangar for those who haven't either seen it or just wanted a really condensed form. I've had some complaints that my videos are too long. So I'm going to try to shoot, keep them short, condensed, and happy for ADHD people and the like, like myself, butterfly, dog, squirrel. Anyways, um, next I'm at, ugh, next upcoming part, I am actually thinking of introducing you guys to a very interesting man. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you guys to Lancaster. As you previously mentioned that I need to talk to him, I finally have. Today we're going to go over a potential project that me and him have planned, as well as the topic of permadeath, as it seems to be the topic of, the day, of today. But without further ado, Lancaster, you're on the floor. Hey everybody, Lancaster here. Uh, from the Star Citizen Radio Project, basically a little thing I wanted to start up, and it's been gaining a little bit of momentum behind the scenes. I now have contacted... Dr. Hawk as well, so you can stop bugging me too. So yeah, as we both mentioned, we're working together. We have an idea formulated. Um, Star Citizen FM will continue. I'm going to try to keep it, you know, fact-based and news-based, uh, and with a little speculation here and there. And then the project that we have in mind is sort of more free flow, as to allow you know different views and opinions to speculate. However, for today, um, as I've mentioned before, permadeath seems to be the topic of today, and Lancaster is interested in talking about it, and I'll try to bring up a few counterpoints, and we'll see where it goes from there, and try to clear up some frustration as well as confusion about the permadeath. Lancaster. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, well, um, as most of you probably already know, if you haven't heard, then, you know, check out the forums. I'll make a link. Uh, yes. The There was a quick comment made on a recent interview with Chris Roberts about the uh, consequences of death. The statement was basically made, how will death affect you? Will it be, you know, if you're doing like a boarding action on a, you know, capital ship or whatnot, what happens when you die? Is it going to be like a ticket-based system out of a COD game or is it going to be something more substantial? 
Well, Chris Roberts liked it to Counter-Strike in the terms of when you're down, you're out of the fight. And this has led to a lot of heated arguments on either side of the field. I myself welcome a more permanent death system. Let's go into okay. more... So why would you welcome a more permanent death system? Because there are because... some people out there, if I may, who yes. invest a lot of time, or maybe casual players. They don't have time to, you know, devote hundreds of thousands of hours, not that you would get that much, but you get no. the point, into a game. And the last thing I think they'd want to see is, you know, getting potted and losing everything. That's understandable. But the thing is, is that in a game like this is different than a game like a single player game. You need to understand in a single player game, you are Johnny McBadflank. You know, you, I don't know if I can, can I say the A word on here? Can uh, you keep it to PG-13 or? Uh, I think we're all adults. Just all right, yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> if you want to be Johnny Badass, Ultimate Combat Shooter Man, you can do it in single player or in co-op. But when you're in a game like this, Everyone can't be Johnny McBadass Shooter Combat Man. And if you want to get yourself into combat, you need to realize there are consequences to your actions. Now, as stated by Chris Roberts, you know, once you're dead doesn't mean you lose everything permanently. He stated that there was a possibility that you're saved, and then you'll come back with like a prosthesis or something, and you know, a little bit less of your body there, a little bit more machine. Um, he used the word cybernetic. I don't believe he was thinking it as in terms of like a Dusek cybernetics, more of you know a prosthesis. And so, would you, so would you compare that to something, let's say, like Fable? Because Fable had the system where if you played like a dumbass, you got scarred up. People thought you were ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, that's a lot closer. Um, it's if something happens to you over time, you know, you have a few, let's say, quote unquote, lives until you're completely out of the race. But if you're using up all these lives, you're doing something wrong. And when you do something wrong in a game, you lose. Now, like I said before, you know, you're not going to be one shot and out. So you might go months between dying if you play things safe. You know, if you stick with the battle, stick with your friends, join groups, invest in better defenses, train your flying and God forbid, run away from danger. Um, you know, you could go your entire time playing it smart and living. Okay, that makes sense. But what about us, you know, I'll, I'll speak for, you know, the anti-death people here. Um, sure. I'm a head-on assault player. I'm a mech warrior fan. I play an Atlas. Right. I'm a tank. I rush in. That's my problem, though. I don't think I rush in. Dark Souls probably taught me to not <laughs> do that because it didn't reward that kind of behavior, but some people don't learn from that, uh, Ken. They will keep trying the same strategies over and over, and they might get frustrated if they keep getting reset to square one. Well, you know, then, unfortunately, it's if I don't like... Let, let, let me put it. I'm not very good at real-time strategy games. Honestly, I it's my weakest point. I don't know how to work the beginning, the early game. I like to enter in... I, when I played StarCraft II... I like to enter in the cheats, give myself, you know, unlimited health, just zerg rush everything with, with, you know, just overwhelming numbers. But play on the fair game, I can't play a real-time strategy game. And the you want to know what? With, the problem with RTS is you can't play fair. If you play I, Total Annihilation or uh, Supreme Commander, yeah. um, it's basically user every dirty trick in the book. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> but that's the thing is that I don't know how to play it. But therefore, it's my, it's my issue of I don't know how to play this well. I don't know how to play this smart, therefore I'm not good at the game. The game is a great game, StarCraft 2 is a great game, StarCraft 3 is a great game, but I'm not good at it, therefore it is my fault. If you, as a player that likes to rush in head first, and you get killed all the time, then you need to learn to change your strategy. In this case, you need to learn to not go on suicidal kamikaze runs, realizing that it doesn't work here. But it's fun. Yes. Uh, there is, that's the thing, is that there's that, if you want to do kamikaze or suicidal runs, do it on single player or co-op. And that brings but, up another point I've been thinking about. There are players out there, if you've ever played Battlefield 3, or any yep. other equivalent game, who will strap C4, or I'm hoping this would not happen, <laughs> overload yeah. a ship's reactor and just fly it into a constellation. Or I, I can see it happening, just, right, you know, you're yes. flying along, that somebody doesn't, you know, they don't care about the permadeath. And boom, you just had a Hornet with, you know, five tons of C8 explosive or whatever they use, 
yep. blow up everything you had. You know, you can't really speak for those kind of people because I, they don't give a hell. Unfortunately, you can't speak to them, but whether or not you had the permadeath system or not, people like that aren't going to change. You're going to create a character specifically designed to be a kamikaze. But the fact of the matter is, is that there can be the number of those people will dwindle dramatically than the otherwise. Fair enough. Um, it's, you know, if whether or not you have the permadeath system, but if you don't have that permadeath system in place, the number of kamikaze runs is going to skyrocket. Because it's going to be a legitimate last-ditch effort. But if you're part of a group, like a pirate group, and you realize that you're going after a convoy that's being protected by a you know, PMC group or something like that, and you realize, oh, crap, they got reinforcements incoming, let's get out of here. Right. Instead of, like, let's take as many of them with us while we die, you know. Um, that would, be, you know, it's... There really is no perfect answer for anything, but this, I think, is a step in the right direction. So how do how do we calm the nerves or soothe, you know, the tempers of those that aren't exactly liking this idea of a permadeath? It's not final. We don't know because it was a comment. Right. And you know, I'm trying to speak for those that, you know, not like it, but I'm also impartial to my own. I, you know, playing Dark Souls, I don't mind mm. dying if I have to. <laughs> right. Yes, he does. But um, you know, how, how how do we soothe, you know, tempers? Because at this point, we don't know. We, like, that's the point. We could tell people. So There's you not hate, much that we can do, really. If the person is prone to getting up in arms over stuff like this, there's not much you and I or, you know, the random forum goer can do other than just not try and fuel them. If someone is entrenched in their ways of not liking a system and saying to themselves, if this actually happens, I'm not playing the game. Oh, Worked up that much over a two-minute vague idea that's still in the works. There's not much that we can really do. Fair enough. So, with closing comments to this, permadeath being the way that we think it is right now, um, where do you think this would take the actual player base? Because in previous games, you know, you have Daisy, where there's permadeath, but no actual real consequence. You can run around, die, and then respawn, find yourself in the infield, and continue on your bandit slash hero slash whatever the hell ways you want. As where this, if there really is as much of an investment I think there will be into ships and that, will people be very reserved for combat? Is this going to be, you know, the daisy of space, or are we going to see people being cautious and worried because, you know, hey, that's an you know, even a pirate, that my ship is, in a, right. is a big investment. Do I have to worry about dying? Do I have to worry about restarting? How long will it take before I become operational and I can start on my piratey ways again? See, Alara, I told you I would talk about pirates. You can't get mad at me now. Oh, and rum. <laughs> there. Alara and whoever told me to talk about rum and pirates, I said it. So just there. <laughs> they said there wasn't um, enough pirates in the last episode, so there you go. Maybe I'll... Oh, actually, that's. Can I put one quick pirate thing while we're out here? Um, um, if it's related to the permadeath, sure. Yeah, sure. A comment was brought up as to why worry about being a pirate if once you die, you become someone else without a bounty. Um, I thought that was a pretty um, focused question um, that relies on a lot of information that we don't know, but working with just that question, I thought I'd say that, you know, it's probable that if you are a pirate that does die, you lose any of the illegal stuff, and I wouldn't be surprised if your bounty is taken out of your assets. So, you know, you would have more to lose as a pirate dying than you would as a legal citizen dying. That would make sense. At the same time, I'd like to see if they actually had, if this is kin-based or family-based. I can, I can see why people wouldn't like that because their names or whatever would change. Right. But what if there was a legacy slash, you know, criminal record system? It doesn't matter if you've died or you've changed characters. You still, like, that's one thing I liked about Eve, although people worked around it with all the cassette. Yeah. Um, is that you were still, you know, your actions were still tied. If you, you know, went into Kaldari space, and blew the shit out of every Concord agent you saw, it didn't matter. It would tail still take you months to, you know, make them even consider trading with you again, yeah, let alone yeah. not shoot you as soon as you go into their yeah, space. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, what it, it, like, do we I mean, know? Legacy, legacy, as you said, is a possibility. You know, father to son, father to friend, you know, that kind of thing. Um, at the same time, maybe you do just want to make a new character. Maybe you do want to just swap it out. You might have options as to how much of a permanence. 
But the fact of the matter is, is that you've died probably more than you should have. And therefore, you lost the game. Fair enough. Should change it to you died though, just Dark Souls. I, I, might, mod it. I might just mod it so it's just you died. You died. <laughs> game <laughs> over. <laughs> just watch it looking for bonfires in space. Although, yeah. Oh, I played way too much of that. Well, closing comments. Um, I'd like to thank you for talking with me. Uh, we My don't. Re we can't really go over this until we have more details. But in the meantime, I don't think people should, you know, worry about it as much as they are until we have more solid facts. Um, I'd like to actually make a quick shout out to uh, Fal Falaron. Thank you, by the way, for uh, that awesome graphic. If you noticed, it's been in the video the entire time. And uh, nice one, other, that was nice. one other thing I forgot to mention back during my Wingman's Hangar review, Eric, you sexy beast, you called me out. To that I say, I salute you. <laughs> and I salute you too. <laughs> so, this is Dr. Hawk and Lancaster signing off. Next time, we shall go where, the, go where the stars take us. Take care and fly safe.